Hi, it's Sandy from ParkerLanes.com and today you find me um, trying to keep cool in the basement of our house um, and visiting with my sister Annette who's here from Colorado. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so Annette is somebody who cannot stay still and is sitting in front of the television here making That's materials good. for her crocheted bags. Now she makes her crocheted bags by recycling plastic carrier bags and so I thought that I would get the camera and give you a chance to see how she makes her plastic yarn yarn. Um, so here we go. Let me let me show you. So what are you doing there Annette? So the first step to making the bags is to make the yarn okay and what we do is I take all my bags and I flatten them because I'm usually working with thousands of bags at a time okay um, my smallest bags take about 50 carrier bags my biggest bags take about 250 carrier bags okay um, so after they're flattened you need to cut them into loops and so what I do is I take the flattened bags and I usually take about three at a time mm-hmm um, I fold them yeah and then I have a really nice, easy way to cut off the bottom. Okay. And that just goes into the recycling bag. And then I cut off the top. So that you just have a so tube. So those are the in, handles. Yeah. So that you just have a tube in effect. Exactly. So then I cut it in half. And then cut those into halves. So each carrier bag makes four loops. Okay. So what I do is um, I separate mine by colors. So I have white bags, I have brown bags, and I have gray bags. And so what I'm going to do, the next step in it, is to then take these loops. And remember there were about three, I usually cut them in um, three at a time because that's what my scissors go through easily. <laughs> so then what you need to do is I'll take the two bags, or the two loops here, and I turn, use a, I believe it's considered a hitch, or a half hitch, and then that turns it into yarn. So what I'm doing is I'm got the loop, loop on my arm. arm, then I grab my second loop and pull it through. Yeah. Then I wrap it around itself and pull. Okay, can you do so that once more? So let me do that a couple more times for you. So again, I've got my arm in the loop. I've got my new loop. I bring that in so it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. I wrap one over the top of the other and pull. And then I can pull on there. Very good. Can I, can I zoom in here on the knot just to see what it looks like? I sure can. It, it's it's barely anything here then. Yes, so that makes it easy to crochet with. Okay. Um, the smaller your knot, the less it's going to affect your ability to crochet with. So, do you have your crochet hooks? Yes. Yeah. So then this is my yarn. So then what we're gonna do is I go ahead and I get that into a ball which makes it easy to crochet. And like a cooking show, here's, here's the ball that I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> How many bags do you think that ball is? I am honestly not sure. Oh. <laughs> so um, for my crochet hooks, I have a size N, is, and that is... N for Nancy? N for Nancy. Okay. Um, and I also have... Well, yeah, it looks like my size N is the one that I'm going to use because that's the one I have right here. Um, I have a couple other sizes. Um, I think I have used an O before and I've used as small as an L. The plastic bags are a little bit thicker, so that's why you're going to be using a bigger crochet hook. Okay. Now, the way I do my bags is in rounds. And so, um, for crocheters out there, um, you can always do... Uh, I think it's called a magic loop or magic circle or something like that. I've never mastered that, so I don't use them. 
Um, but you can always start it that way. What I'm doing is I am making a slip knot. So I have a loop and then I pull the middle up through the loop and pull it tight. Okay. And this is my first loop that my hook will go into. And then what I'm going to do for crochet or terms is I'm going to chain four. So I just hook my yarn around and pull it through and I do that four times. Okay. Can I see that? So it's that chain four right there. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to... Can you count the four that you're talking one, about? One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this one that I just counted as number one and I'm going to pull through another chain and that's a joining stitch. So now I have this little circle uh -huh. and I'm going to be working in this circle for my first round of actual crocheting. Okay. So I am tucking my tail back here and holding on to it. I'm going to do two, sorry, three chains. So one, two, and three. And this counts as my first double crochet chain one stitch. And these bags are really simple um, because I make a lot of them. <laughs> um, so almost the only stitch I stitches it uses is that double crochet chain one. And I do seven for my base. So this one counts as my first. I'm going to do seven more. So where did you put that one as you did it? So this, so the way the double crochet works, sorry, is you loop around your hook once. Yeah. You go into the, that little ring that we just created. Oh, okay. And pull it through. And then you pull through two of the loops on the hook. And you still have two left. So you loop it around again and pull through two more. And there's your double crochet. And then we need to chain one. So we're going to pull one more through. We loop around. pull, Go into that middle. Pull one through. Then we pull through two and pull through two, so that's our double crochet, and then we chain one. We hope that it keeps working there. It's very meditative watching you do it. <laughs> You, you can, I suppose, do it even without looking. You've done so many, huh? Um, I still look most of the time, but I definitely don't have to keep my eyes on it all of the time. <laughs> uh, when I stop looking is usually when I make a mistake, so... And as unique as these bags are, I do try hard not to make mistakes on them. So let's count this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I finished my first row. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join back and instead of actually joining to the double crochet, uh -huh. which would be going through this loop, I'm actually just going to join in the center uh -huh. because the rest of my stitches are actually going to be worked in the chain one spaces. So again, I pull through there. So that makes this a full round. Uh -huh. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain my three because throughout these base stitches, your first stitch on any row is a chain three, which counts as a double crochet chain one. And then because this is a circle, in order to make the circle work, I need to do two in every loop. So the first one was seven. The second round is going to be 14. So again, these are all just double crochet chain ones. We're working in the chain one space of the previous row. And since there were seven chain one spaces in the previous row, and I'm doing two in each of these rows, we're going to be up to 14 stitches for this row or round. Does your hands start to hurt? Um, 
they have but the one the good thing about chaining with the bags is that because it's the bigger material and the bigger hook normally when I'm doing yarn crochet I'm crocheting this way and I'm holding my hook a lot like a pencil uh-huh um, when I'm crocheting with the bags, it's actually easier to grip it like this. Okay. And because I'm gripping it that way, it doesn't hurt my fingers as much. So especially as I'm getting older and I am starting to have more arthritis in my hands, uh -huh. um, doing it this way is much easier on my fingers and okay. keeping them from hurting too much. Now granted, I don't get attacked by my ball of yarn here. <laughs> Now, on my bags, I do have three sizes that we sell at our farmer's market. Um, I have a small bag that has 21 um, chains or um, stitches in, a, in its round that go up the sides. Um, the medium has 28 and the large has 42. And if you're a math person, you'll notice that all of those numbers are divisible by seven because, again, I have seven rows, seven stitches in my foundation row. And so when you're working in a round, that means that you're always going to have a multiple of the number of stitches in your foundation row in order to keep it round. So oh, okay. in each round, I'm going to add seven more stitches. So the First round was 14, the second round, or sorry, first round was seven, second round is 14, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I counted right there. Um, so now my third round, I'm gonna add seven more stitches to it, and so it will be 21. So again, I'm gonna join that. So, so children learning maths can learn their sevens by doing your, by crocheting your bag. Yes. So the way I add the seven is obviously if I did two in each one, I would end up with 28. So what I want to do is I want to do one and then I want to do a double. So a single and then a double in each of these. So, so this first one is uh -huh. there's my double crochet chain one, and then I'm going to go to the next space over and double crochet chain one twice. And then I'll go to the next one and just do a single. And then the next one will have two. And, and you're just going into the, the, pre, the big hole yes. from your previous stitch rather than trying to get into the middle. Yes, so that's working in the chain one space. Okay. So when you're reading an it makes English, it a lot easier. When you're reading a pattern that was done in the United States, um, that's what they call working in the chain one space. And yes, especially with this big, uh, with the plastic yarn that's a little bit thicker, um, it doesn't always rub against each other very well. It's much easier to just work in the spaces. And what we're, I'm going to show you right now is my smallest bag. So this will be my last row before I start working on the sides. And one of these bags I can usually get done start to fit, well, not counting making the yarn for this crocheting part itself. Um, it usually takes me about a half an hour to 45 minutes to finish the entire bag. Wow, that's not bad. That's no, a, that's not one really. TV show. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so these smaller bags are really easy for me to keep in stock. And what do you put in the bags on your market stall? Um, so right now we are selling the bags by themselves without anything inside. In the past, and probably, um, so we're in Colorado, and Colorado um, has some really good peach farmers. 
Ooh. Um, so come late July, early August, we will have peaches for sale um, from some of our farmers on the western slope. And um, so when those peaches come in, I'll put six to seven peaches in a bag and sell it um, usually for 15 to 20 dollars. Mm -hmm. well, because that's of good, course you're getting get the, the reusable bag to go along with it. Exactly, it's a whole basket. Um, the basket then after the peaches are taken out of it, um, these baskets are really good. I like to use them for my lunch bag, for my office lunch. Okay. Um, it makes, you know, it's about the perfect size for a lunch. So now as you'll see, we have the 21 stitches all the way around. Okay. Nine, ten. 21. Good, I didn't lie. <laughs> so at this point, I'm going to start working on the sides. And you'll have seen that in all of the rest of these, I did the joining stitch and then crocheted three. Well, now I'm actually going to be working in a loop, and there won't actually be another individual start of a round. So what I'm going to do, or what I do, is I go ahead and I start with a single crochet in this first chain one space and that's like the foundation that's the first stitch of the sidewall okay so then I'm gonna chain one again my next space I'm gonna do a half double is what it's called or the way I ta was, was taught was what it was called if you're in England this might be called something else or else if you're in America, this might be called something else. I don't know which way I was taught. I just know that some people do it differently. So what it means is that in, for all the rest of them, I've been pulling through two. I'm going to pull through all three loops on my hook at this point. So it's not a single. It's not a double because the double you pull through twice. So Would be a again, triple. I, was called, I was told it was called a half double since you have those three loops and you pulled through all three at once. So there we go is my chain one. And now I'm back to my doubles that I'll be doing. So again, for the doubles, it's you pull through two and you pull through two. And then here's my chain one. So now what this is going to do, since I am not adding any more stitches in, is you will start to see the work curve in and you'll see the sides already starting to take shape. So. And how many rows up the sides do you do? For my small bags, I do a total of 10 rows from the, um, so this one counting as my first row. Your seven row. So yeah, my row of seven is my first row. So there's three on the bottom and then seven for the sides. Oh, okay. Now on my medium size bags, those are um, big enough to hold a U.S. gallon of milk. And I have tested them with a full <laughs> gallon of milk. Um, they go, um, once I get to the wall, I do 10 stitches and then an 11th for the row for the handle. And my largest bags, I do 10 stitches up and then I have an 11th and 12th row for the handle. And if it's all right, I would like to say a big thank you to all of the customers um, of ours who have donated these bags to me. Um, they've wanted to make sure that their bags are truly recycled um, and not just thrown away. And so they have brought them to me at the farmer's market and entrusted me to turn them into these bags that can be reused. <laughs> and so thank you to all those folks. Um, I really appreciate the work that you do in bringing them to me and one of one of you even in cutting them and getting them to this point to where all I have to do is make my <laughs> yarn. Um, you are 
wonderful in doing that and helping to shave some of the time intensity that it takes to do this. And then of course, um, and my father also has helped me with cutting my bags so that I can continue to, to do this. Um, so as you'll see here, we've, I've done my 21 and I'm back to where that single crochet was. And so instead of joining, I'm just going to keep on going. And it, at this point then, it's more or less a spiral. Oh, okay. So this part gets to be the tedious, somewhat easy, well, it's the easy to watch TV part. So this is the part you want when it gets to the good part of the episode. <laughs> because at this point, it's just keep going if there's a... Just keep going into the next one and do your double crochet chain one and... And what's your TV program of choice? Oh, whatever my husband's watching. Oh, <laughs> that's very diplomatic. Or my father. <laughs> or my brother-in-law. Yeah. And this will be the, be the bit that we probably fast forward to watch your hands move faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> This is a really good um, project for living frugally and sustainably. Um, can you talk a little bit about your, some more about your um, company and what you produce and why you go to farmers markets? What's the name of it? So our company's called Anklagaver, and Anklagaver are the Norwegian words, and I apologize to all those Norwegian out there because I'm probably pronouncing it completely wrong. Um, for simple gifts and main thing was we wanted to try to keep it simple um, we what we had was a problem and the problem was we went to England and had wonderful <laughs> English ciders and Perry's when we came back to the United States we couldn't find anything that tasted anything similar to what we had in England and we're very disappointed in how everything seemed to taste like a fruity beer <laughs> instead of like a cider or a perry like what we had had in England. So we decided to try to make our own. And we discovered in trying to make our own that since we were starting with whole fruit, we had a lot of leftover applesauce. <laughs> um, we live in the state of Colorado and Colorado has what they call a cottage foods law that allows us to um, can our applesauce that's left over after we press the juice and sell it. Um, and so that is what we do. We um, have a wholesaler who sells us our fruit and she's part of a community supported agriculture program. Mm -hmm. um, she works with small farmers in Colorado and elsewhere who can't, who can't sell to big wholesalers. Um, we buy our fruit from her and bring it home and process it, uh, turn it into the applesauce, and we have many different flavors depending on what fruits are available. Um, right now I think we have nine flavors here in 2022, including uh, pumpkin spice, which, disclaimer, does not have real pumpkin in it. I just used the syrup, that the beverage syrup, to flavor. <laughs> um, and then um, we also have a raspberry and a cherry, as well as a mango, which is our mo has been our most popular flavor, has been our mango. Um, we do all of our apple sauces. We try really hard to use the best ingredients that we can. Um, we make sure that the fruit is very clean before we process it so that, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of it isn't organic. Um, we do try to make sure that it's as clean as it can be before we process it. So I just started the seventh row. Um, so this is my final row. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, I have often had to back out because I just keep going. <laughs> um, 
So what I'm looking for here at the bottom is I'm trying to get back to my single crochet, um, which is right here. So I count this as a loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six there. Here there's one, two, three, four, five, six still. Sorry. Yep, so I'm sorry. I'm still on my sixth row. Oh. <laughs> I miscounted. You were telling me about your Simple Gifts farmer's stand and how you try to have very clean fruit for applesauce yes um, so we sell we started out by selling just our applesauce the first couple of years that we did the market and we've been doing the market since 2018 um, in 2020 with COVID happening um, our market obviously had a little bit of a slow start even though it was an outdoor market um, I don't think we were actually able to truly meet um, or have an open market until July that year. Um, and we realized that most of the folks who sold produce at our farmer's markets weren't there. Oh. Um, okay. So we got permission to, since we get our fruit from a wholesaler, to sell that fruit fresh retail first and then um, anything we don't sell at the market, we then go ahead and process into our applesauce and hard ciders. Um, and so we started that in 2021. Um, and that worked so well that we now actually get vegetables from our wholesaler as well. And later on this fall, what we're doing with any of the vegetables that we don't sell is we are dehydrating them and we'll be turning them into soup make, soup bases. Oh, okay. And so those are the wholesome foods that we sell. Um, and then we also sell our simple gifts. And so our simple gifts entails things like these reusable bags that we make out of the disposable bags, um, which I do need to count again here. So now I am on my seventh row around. <laughs> um, we also have wax products. So that's like beeswax candles with the beeswax that was donated from Vic's Bees. Um, and of course, Vic is my, our father. <laughs> um, and then we have some other wax products like we do pine cone fire starters. The pine cones are donated by our neighbor's pine tree. <laughs> um, the wax for those usually comes from the little bit of wax that's left at the end of every candle we've ever seen to burn. Um, and the wicks for those are actually cotton t-shirts oh. um, that have been cut into strips. So again, recycling and reusing as much as we possibly can. Okay. Um, I do most of the other crocheted work and most of the yarn that I get from that comes from baby blankets or other blankets that have kind of fallen apart that I'm repurposing and again keeping it as much as possible out of the garbage can. Uh -huh. um, my sister, so from <laughs> parkerleans.com, we have um, tea towel tote bags which I'm hoping that we have some to take back with us this time again because yeah, we've sold couple. out of those. <laughs> Um, we also are going to be selling um, some of the cards that my sister makes. So blank note cards or um, note cards with special sayings on them for birthdays or um, different gifts. So yeah. that way um, our customers will have even more of a choice. And then we also have some of my father's woodworking and so the only thing we don't have is um, Phil, so again from <laughs> parkerleans.com, makes these really cute ornaments that he hand paints um, from air dry clay, or at least he has in the past. And so I'm actually hoping that maybe we can add those to our sales floor as well here in the future. When we talk to the folks at our farmer's market, we love to be able to tell them just how much of a family business that it really is, even though the applesauce is, of course, our own 
um, every member of our family does chip in to help um, with making things for the market for us to sell. So, yeah. Do you sell your products online? At this time, we do not, um, because the main products that we do sell are our foods. And Colorado Cottage Foods, um, the law that we make our foods under, doesn't allow us to sell those foods out of state. And I know that there are some online platforms um, where you can specify local shipping only. The couple of those that I have looked into, most of them have said no foods. Um, foods, among other things, our products are in glass jars. And so it would be extremely difficult. Um, sorry, so what I'm doing now, we've hit our seventh row. At the end of the seventh row, what I did is I did another half double to end it out. Um, and now what I am doing is I am undoing this knot in the yarn. You know, most yarn, you get to the end and you would just cut it. But because these are all plastic bags and you have basically these 18 inch sections of yarn, all I really have to do is just pick at this knot a little bit. You made it. Yes. So again, because it is just that half hitch, all that I really have to do is just slide this. here or vice versa and then out it comes my big old bar ball of yarn is ready to do my next one and then what I do with this is I go ahead and I'm going to do one more single crochet here just to bring it down and kind of make the um, row be even. Okay. I'm going to pull that through. And I have this little tail then that you can hang your bag. For these smallest bags, I use... Ribbon for the handles, and I've already cut up a bunch of ribbon to be the size of the handles. And then what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and threading it through this top row. One, two, three, four, five. So that should be pretty good. And then I just do a simple knot in the ribbon. And I usually feed the ribbon through to about there. So that way it's kind of hidden by the knots and everything else. And there we go is the small bag that I do. Very nice. And that was done in 38, well, 38 minutes plus a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and us talking. So, again, about 45 minutes for these small bags start to finish. Very good. Excellent. So there you have it. A little bit of chat with Annette um, from Enclagaver. Um, her company is out in um, Palmer Lake Monument. Monument, Colorado, Colorado. Um, on Saturdays during the summer. And then we also do the Cordero Farmers Market in Colorado Springs on Sundays during the summer. And that goes until Labor Day. The Monument one goes until the middle of October. So the second week of October. Oh, okay. Excellent. And they can find you on enclagaver.com. And we'll have a link to their website in the description if you happen to be in Colorado and want to go see Annette and get one of her now famous um, handmade bags, by all means, um, stop by and 
tell them that you saw them on Parker Lings. Uh, for now, I'm Sandy, and um, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care, and God bless. God bless. Thank you, Parker Lean's audience. <laughs> Bye-bye, then.